A sewing machine is a great way to speed up making your leather goods. You'll take hours of hand stitching and reduce it into minutes or even seconds of machine stitching. In this course, I'll be teaching you the different feed mechanisms, two main styles of sewing machines for leather crafters, safety tips, maintenance, cleaning and storage, how to oil and change the oil, the different needles, threads and thread sizes, the edge guide, how to wind the bobbin, thread the needle, adjust the tension, choose the stitch length and adjust presser foot height, how to stitch from one point to another, including back stitches, how to stitch around corners and complete a stitch back to the same point. Without further ado, let's begin this course. There are two types of sewing machines, domestic and industrial. For leather goods, an industrial sewing machine is a better option. As a domestic sewing machine will not have the strength to stitch through multiple layers of leather required for leather craft projects. When it comes to a sewing machine, you want to make sure that you have the correct feed mechanism for stitching leather. The feed mechanism is the mechanism that feeds the leather through. There are many different types of feed mechanisms. However, for this course, I'm going to have the description of three. They are drop feed system, walking foot and compound feed. The type of sewing machine I would recommend is an industrial sewing machine with a compound feed. Once you know what type of sewing machine you want, and also the feed mechanism, the next is the style of sewing machine. There are a wide variety, however I'm just going to focus on the two more common ones for leather crafters. They are the flatbed and the cylinder arm sewing machine. I would recommend a cylinder arm sewing machine for a beginner, as this allows you to use a flatbed attachment with the cylinder arm. However, I would recommend you double check that there is a flatbed attachment that comes with the sewing machine. With sewing machines, there are light, medium, or heavy. This again will depend on the type of leather goods you want to make. The machine I have is the Cowboy CB6900. This machine is a medium to heavy, with a 13 millimeter thick maximum sewing thickness. The machine can stitch leather, drill fabrics, canvas, PVC fabric, and webbing. It has a nice stitch and I've used this to make wallets, bags, and prototype belts, etc. I've also stitched a range of thicknesses and material from canvas to kangaroo leather all the way to thick harness leather. So this machine has been very versatile. Here are the technical specifications in more detail. For this course, I'm gonna be teaching you how to use the Cowboy CB6900. If you don't have this machine, that's fine because most of the skills such as winding a bobbin, setting the tension, setting the stitch length, forward stitching, back stitching, stitching around corners, etc., will apply to other sewing machines. There might be some slight differences with how you oil the machine, but this is where I'd recommend you read the manufacturer's operating manual and or check with the supplier. Setting up the machine is very easy if you have the instructions and the operating manual. If you need to lift the machine onto the bench, it's better to have someone help you as the machine is heavy and make sure you lift with your knees and follow the correct lifting form. I'd recommend you reading the operation manual as this will allow you to understand your machine in much more detail and what it requires. A full description of the sewing machine parts, troubleshooting, settings for different speeds and other reset or adjustments can be found in your specific sewing machine owner's manual. See supplier or manufacturer's operating manual for more detail for troubleshooting, repairs, etc. As this course will only focus on the basics of using and operating a functional sewing machine. An important feature on a sewing machine is the speed reducer. A speed reducer allows you to reduce the speed while continue stitching with no risk of damaging the needle or leather. The speed reducer does this by reducing the speed of the machine while increasing the torque through either a belt driven speed reducer or a gear driven speed reducer. There are a range of different gear driven speed reducers. This increased torque at slow speeds allows the needle to have extra strength to stitch through the leather. If there were no speed reducer, the torque would remain the same at the slow speed and the needle would not have enough strength to stitch through the leather, risking damaging the needle or leather, especially on thicker projects. The benefits of a speed reducer are, it allows you to stitch through thicker leather at slow speeds without damaging the needle or leather or fabric. You can stitch slowly and more precisely. This would be done when going around corners, back stitching, or when you want to sew slower. It allows the motor to not need to work as hard to sew at slow speeds. You can buy speed reducers for your machine if it doesn't have one, but I'd recommend buying a machine that already has one. I also cannot comment on different speed reducers as I don't have the expertise on the different types. Safety is extremely important when using a sewing machine.
The needles used for sewing machines are very different to the needles used for hand stitching. Sewing machine needles are not blunt like the needles used in hand stitching. The eye of the needle is at the tip and there is a little cutout on the needle. Different needles will lay the stitch differently, similar to using different shaped teeth on pricking rinds or stitching chisels. A particular needle can also be better for sewing canvas compared to others. For this particular sewing machine, there are three main options for needles and these options would be available for similar sewing machines. These needles are round point or cone shaped point needle, LR needle and tri needle. My preference is the LR needle as it gives a nice angled stitch and looks refined with a look similar to hand stitching. The needle also has a little section taken out of it. If the needle is on the wrong side, the hook will hit the needle. This can cause damage either to the hook or needle. Make sure the needle is on the correct side. In terms of thread, thread size in machine stitching is measured in ticket, tech size or metric. You can still find the thread diameter, but you will most likely buy the thread in metric, tech size or ticket. I think metric is the more popular measurement. I use M20 for my machine and that is a metric. With a 140 nm needle, or size 22 needle. Here's a table of different thread sizes and needle sizes for this machine. Now we're gonna move on to the sewing machine and what we're gonna start off with is changing the oil and oiling the machine. What we're gonna do now is change the oil on the machine. What we wanna do is we want to make sure that the table is secure. Now this has wheels on it and it has caster wheels and those caster wheels can be locked in place. So all the caster wheels are secure and there's no risk of this machine moving. Now we're going to have to lift the machine back to reveal the oil sump. To see the oil sump, what we're going to do is just loosen this. Then what we're going to do is actually just move this thread stand back because the machine is actually going to be folding back. On this machine as well, when you put, push the machine back, you want to make sure that you have a support stand at the back because that's what's gonna be holding the machine. So what we're gonna do now is push the machine onto the support stand. Now I'm gonna get my right leg and actually have it onto the surface below. If you can see. Now what that's gonna do is as we push over, we're just going to let it down gently onto the support stand. So you don't wanna be, you don't wanna be holding backwards because also that's gonna do, it's gonna be pulling you. So you just want to just go with it and slowly let it down. We don't want our hand to be on the tensioners. So just above the tensioners. And what we're going to do is just push the machine over. And we just want to just go with it slightly, just so that our weight is just letting it down. And there we go. We can see the oil sump. Now, as you can see, this is the oil sump. And the oil has turned more of a yellowy color. Now, in terms of how often you should change the oil, this will depend. Firstly, is how often you use the machine. However, the second thing is, is if the oil starts to change a color, a different color, for example, a yellow or a brown, then I would recommend changing the oil. What I'm gonna do is just strain the oil into a drink bottle. I was just simply just going to remove this oil. Dirt, all this dirt. You can just try and go along and try and suck all that up. But after we've removed all the oil, we're just going to use a paper towel anyway, so. If you have some residue down the bottom, <clears throat> that's completely fine. And what we're gonna do is just get some paper towel. And what we'll do, we'll just lift this pump out. Just place that there. And what we'll do, we'll just use the paper towels to soak up and clean out the rest of the oil sump. What we'll do, get a little pump, and we'll just put it back into the sump. Now, as you can see, we have two lines here. We have the full with oil line and the add more line. Simply just get the oil. As you can see, it's much better than the 
previous oil. And there we go. What we can do is just we can just move the because what we want to do is we want to make sure that this line here stays in the sump. What I'm going to do is just bring the machine back. When you get to the point where the machine is kind of balancing between going this way and that way, you can have both hands on it, but I'm just going to have one just so you can see. Get your head and just look down here and just make sure that, that line stays within the sump and then bring that down and there you go and just get that put it up there and then tighten a screw like that and just get the thread stands bring them over here like that and that is how you change and fill the oil i'm going to fill up this little bottle here and for that i'm going to be using this little funnel I definitely recommend getting a bottle like this because this is going to be very useful for the maintenance oiling that we're going to be doing because it just allows you to drop a couple drops it's a lot more easier to get in the tight areas and also just allow you to not over oil areas and just drop a couple of drops when needed so as you can see on the machine we have some red holes here there's also a red hole here and there are going to be certain areas that we will need to, we want to make sure that are well oiled every day. So if you're, if you're not using the machine every single day, go by the eight hour rule. So the eight hour rule is probably the, a good rule of thumb. And simply what we're going to do is just drop a couple drops. The next one is right here. Another hole that the manufacturer recommends is this hole here. The next area is going to be here and next is going to be inside the bobbin case i've got a glove on the bobbin there's actually two pieces of metal so there's an independent piece there's a piece here and then there's the piece that goes that turns around so two pieces of metal that are in constant friction so when this machine is going around, let's lift this up. When the machine is going around, you do want to make sure that when you, if you are doing this, the presser foot is always up because you don't want the feed dog and the presser foot to be touching together. So whenever you're doing this, make sure that this presser foot is up and there's just a tab behind here. So as you can see, constant tension, metal on metal. You need to make sure that this area is oiled. Just oil in between those two pieces and you can simply just rotate that around rotate it back rotate it forward etc i'll simply just place bobbin back in there Get the bobbin the next spot is here drop a couple of drops and here What I'll do is just open up this with a screwdriver. We want to make sure that the wicks here are oiled. So we don't want these to be dry. As you can see, they are dry. So what we'll do, we want to make sure that they are well oiled. We'll just release this, just so the oil has something to drip onto. This is what the machine recommends. And what you can do is just, if there's any oil stripped down, just get your paper towel and just clean. What we've done there is pretty much going to be your eight to hour maintenance of your machine what we're going to do now is a three to six month of use now again this is going to depend on how much you use the machine but again depends if you if your machine is stored in a shed like mine is and it's 
subject to hot temperatures. You should still do this just three to six months just to open up the covers, see what they look like, see how the wicks are, just so you know that they're not dry, dried out at all. Is we're gonna be taking off the top cover here. We're then going to take off the side cover again. That's just gonna be part of the maintenance. And also underneath here and this side here. So we're gonna see a lot more of the internals and we're gonna make sure that those areas are well oiled. So to start off with, we're gonna take off this top cover here and then we're just gonna place it on this paper towel here. So as you can see, we have six of these screws and we're going to undo all of them. When we loosen it, there'll then be more tension on the opposite side so what we'll do, we'll just evenly remove each of the screws. I'll just lift off here and a little gasket comes with the piece. So we just wanna make sure that we keep the gasket together with the top cover. And I'll just place that down there. As you can see, we can see inside the top cover. We have the we have these felts here, and we want to make sure that those are lubricated. What we'll do? We're going to lubricate this one here. This one here is wet. And then this one here. If you do see them dry, do put some bit of oil onto them. So with the wicks, you can be, you can use a lot more oil as opposed to when it's metal or metal, you only need to have a couple drops of oil, but definitely make sure that these are wet. Now simply get the cover, just place the cover down. Now it fits very securely. Now the thing is with this cover here, it was a bit of a battle to, on this side, that will change to this side. That screw there is lined up. However, there is a, like I said, there is a bit of a battle to sort these ones out. Is I'm going to go slowly so place this one down slightly, place this one down slightly, and then I'll move to this end. And you're simply going to place them all down Sort of evenly because as you, this side here is lifted up and if you do one too much on this side then lift up this side and then it's just going to be difficult well this one here is, is pretty easy to go down but it's just these ones on this side but Okay, that one's operating the, this one adjusts the presser foot height. So you just make sure that that's actually working. The top cover is on, and now we can move on to the next part. Next thing we wanna do is we're gonna take off the cover here and also the cover here. So what we'll do, we'll just take this cover off here. Just lift up, press the foot. I've put some gloves on, and the next thing I'm gonna do is just simply push this machine back. Now the next thing 
is to take off this screw up here. And there's also another one on the opposite side. The final thing we'll do is we'll just take off this one here. So again, more screws. And we just want to keep these parts together. What we can do first is just get some paper towel and with these other, you know, with these, with these pieces here, we can just clean, as you can see, this looks like there's all, we can just clean these with some paper towel. Just It'll cover underneath. I'm just going to use this cover piece here. And what we're going to do is to simply oil the gear mechanism. Now it just needs a couple of drops of oil, nothing, nothing too much. Just oiling some of the metal on metal parts. And that's pretty much what we're going to do for this part here oiling the gear mechanism. What we want to do is just get the paper towel, just clean underneath here. And what we can do is just get this piece here. And we're going to be placing this on in reverse. So just remember how we took these pieces apart. We'll place them on and how we, the order in the reverse order that we took them off. What we can do now is just get the cover here. There we go. What we need to make sure is that that groove there goes in between there, that little notch there. As you can see, it's in there. Make sure all the screws are tightened. But now in regards to the top cover up here, that is part of the three to six month maintenance. I'm not gonna do that again, but pretty much the exact same thing again. Yeah, and you would just open up this and then go through those areas that we did before. Now it's probably a better idea to do the bottom first and then the top, because I noticed that as I tipped the machine over that some of the oil from here was was dropping down so do the bottom first and then the top now after we've finished the maintenance and we just want to rotate the machine just make sure this presser foot is up because so we just want to make sure that we have haven't done anything and that the machine is turning over where the feed dog is. If you have any oil or over your machine or your bench, simply just get a paper towel and just wipe over it. And we're just going to clean the bobbin. Make sure there's no oil on the bobbin. We don't want to have oil in here. So just be sure you only drop a couple drops of oil. And we'll just clean the bobbin in there and just make sure there's no oil on the bobbin cover. Place them in there. Make sure it's all smooth, it's all flush.
So this is all the maintenance completed from the eight hours of use maintenance, three to six months, and then also when you change the oil once a year or depending on when the oil starts to change color. So if you just keep that maintenance, you should take good care of your machine. And if you keep your machine well maintained, it will be in good condition and operate well. Make sure the machine is turned off and I'm going to be using a size 22 needle. Now you just need to be careful with sewing machines. Just make sure that you get the right size needle and type of needle for your machine because the needles may vary depending on the machine. So just because you see these needles here doesn't mean they're going to fit your machine. And as you see, can see, I'm using a size 22 or NM140 and this is an LR needle. To change the needle, what we're going to do is simply loosen this screw here. Now we want to take into account the way the needle is looking. So if I just bring the needle up, but you can see the little notch is taken out of the needle on this side here. So that little notch that is taken out of the needle, we need to make sure that it is on this side here. Because what's gonna happen is, as the needle goes down, the hook right here is going to grab hold of that thread. And then the thread is gonna go around the bobbin and then you're going to get a lock stitch. So if the needle is on the wrong way, what's gonna happen is the hook is actually going to hit the needle. If this side here, is on this side and that can be damaging for your hook and your needle so we want to avoid that completely so just make sure that the needle is on the correct side is we're simply going to just loosen this and this is the edge guide here let's get that out of the way and then tighten that screw. Now what we can do is when the needle is ready, we can just bring the needle down and I'm just using the hand wheel for this. And we just wanna make sure that the hook doesn't hit the needle. Let's bring it back and forth. As you can see, it isn't. The next thing is the presser foot. The, this is counted as one, but there is two attachments to remove each of them individually. In regards to the presser foot, there are a wide variety of different attachments. I have a whole box full of the different attachments. The one I'm going to be using now, it's the one that came with the machine. It's called a left toe zipper foot. And the reason I use it is because it just allows me to place a project on the edge. If I just bring this down here, it just allows me to stitch on the edge and I can use the edge guide as well. So this foot here would be a bit more difficult. This screw here stays with the presser foot and you can see that each one has a different, so this one has a screw here. They stay with the presser foot. However, you can't really see, you probably can just see it right there, but there is a screw right here. That one has to be, be used on each of the presser feet. So when you undo that screw there, it stays with the next presser foot. Inner, outer. It's pretty simple to to adjust the, to change the presser feet. This one here, you just simply undo the, the screw. This one just comes with an Allen key. This Allen key came with the machine. There we go. remove all that oil so this thing here is called the feed dog now with the presser feet it'd be better just to do the back one first and this one's pretty easy because it just locks in into place this one locks into place pretty easy whereas this one here you need to make sure it's straight 
So again, you just, you have to push this one up as far as it will go. And you just want to make sure that this one stays straight. And you have to also make sure the needle, you don't want to have the needle colliding with the metal. You want to make sure that the needle happily passes down in between it. Just make sure that there is no, the needle is not hitting. The next thing I'm going to be looking at is this edge guide here. And this is probably one of the pieces that you should definitely get for your sewing machine. It just allows you to maintain a straight edge when you are stitching. As you can see, there are a lot of different screws to adjust the edge guide. What I'm going to do now is actually put the edge guide how far I want it away from the edge of the leather. I want to get the ruler, press it against the edge guide, and we want the needle just to find three... I'm going to bring the needle down by the, with the hand wheel. And what we want is we just want the needle to s slightly touch three and a half. So what we can do is just bring the edge guide in. The benefit of this ruler here, there is actually the half measurement. What I'm going to do now is get this screw here. Just tighten up that screw. And what I'll do, I'll just make sure this is straight. Just tighten up that screw. And what I can do is just remeasure, and that is three and a half. What you can do with just with your little spare screws that you don't need, just put them in a little um, Ziploc bag, just so that they're all together. And if you need to go back to them, you can. Another thing about this edge guide is you want to make sure that you can rotate it up and down. To attach the flatbed, lift up the edge guide. Make sure the needle is up as well. We're going to bring the flatbed here. So there are the three screws that you can use. The next thing I'm going to be talking about is this bobbin right here. There's actually two separate threads that are required for machine stitching. With hand stitching, you just use the one thread and then the needles pass in between and then go out and then etc etc. With a sewing machine that doesn't happen. A lock stitch is actually made in the middle and for this you actually need to have two separate threads. So the thread comes from the top here and then the thread comes from the bobbin here up and then that's how you, it makes the lock stitch. So the thread actually wraps around here. So the hook here grabs the thread and then that's how it makes the lock, the lock stitch. So this part here has to be wound. And there are summary benefits of the lock stitch. A disadvantage to this is because the thread locks in the middle of the, so it doesn't pass all the way through. If the stitch breaks, the entire stitch is compromised. You might notice this with fabric. If a stitch breaks, the thread unravels. However, the stitches won't unravel as easily on a leather project compared to thin fabric, but nevertheless, a broken stitch is an unraveling risk with a lock stitch. That's just a disadvantage to the machine stitch. Um, hand stitching has, their, has its pros and cons as well. Hand stitching is much more stronger than a machine stitch. However, it takes a lot more time. What we're going to do is wind this bobbin. Take out the bobbin cover and then this is the bobbin right here now simply what you can do is just get the bobbin cover and place it back in here you probably don't need to but it's a good idea just to have it there just so it's all secure um, if you don't want to have the bobbin cover in simply just close this and then close the lid but it's a good idea to just get the bobbin cover and place it in. Make sure it's flush, close it, and then close the lid. 
Now, it's a good idea to have this closed because it's going to be much more safer as opposed to when this is open and the parts are spinning around. So just have this closed because it'll be much more safer. Another thing as well is when you wind the bobbin, you want to make sure that the presser foot is up. You don't want to be having the presser foot down and moving because it's just going to be metal or metal. So don't do that. Have the presser foot up. So whenever winding a bobbin, have the presser foot up. What we're going to do is we're going to bring this thread up here down to this tensioner and then across onto the bobbin. Before we actually do this, I'm just going to talk about the belt quickly. You just want to make sure around the belt area is completely clear and clean. My machine came with a cover, however I took the cover off because it was um, one of the, the belt here was rubbing against one of the little parts, so I just took the belt off. Um, this machine here has a bobbin that's built into the machine. Some of them have them below the 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 belt so you can't really see where my finger is but some of them have have the bobbin below the belt so you probably might not be able to cover the the belt so yeah just make sure that when you are using the machine it's completely clear there's no tools you know sitting next to the to the, the belt so yeah just make sure it's completely clear the next thing i'm going to be doing is getting the thread here and we're going to be bringing it up to here and simply just push it through, let it go through, and then you can simply just push this back. You don't have to obviously bring it forward. If you do, just make sure you push it back because you want this to be in line with the thread. So you don't want this to be like this. Push it back, make sure it's in line with the thread. Then with the thread, bring it down to the tensioner, and you have to just click it in and make sure that it is in with the tensioner bring it through this hole here and then bring it down to where the bobbin is. Now, in regards to the thread, you don't want the thread to be relaxed like this. So for example, if you find that your thread is, is sitting quite relaxed, what you can do is just simply go back to the thread and just wind the thread. Just wind it till it's kind of tense like that and then just let the thread down. But what you want is you want the thread to be coming nicely to this tension. And like I said, just make sure it's completely locked in. So just pull the thread or when it's around, just make sure you pull it onto this tensioner. Things to remember, make sure the thread is coming up nicely through this hole, that this is in line with the thread. This is coming down into this hole around the tensioner. Make sure it's clicked in to the tensioner and then make sure it comes out of this hole to here. Now that we have the thread here, we're going to get the bobbin and simply just get the thread. And as you can see, there's a hole right here. There's a hole on the opposite side as well. And it doesn't actually, it doesn't matter which side you actually put it on the, the bobbin shaft. Simply just get the thread and go through the bobbin. Simply just push it on the bobbin shaft and we want to make sure that we have a tension here to here. Because if there is no tension, if it's a bit lax like this, then you're going to get an uneven wind and that obviously will not be um, consistent and the machine will struggle. Now the benefit of having a dual stand, as you can see we have the, the dual thread stand, is that you can actually operate the sewing machine and wind the bobbin at the exact same time. So what you can do is just use the, the left thread stand to, to sew with the bobbin already in there. So you can actually sew some leather pieces and then you can actually wind the thread with the other um, thread stand with a bobbin. So you can actually stitch and wind the bobbin at the exact same time with another bobbin in there that's actually stitching. But since we're not doing that, we have to make sure that the presser foot is is up so make sure that this is up so lift up the tab at the back and make sure that this is up now the next thing we have to do is simply just click this lever into place what that does is that it allows the bobbin so this shaft here to connect to the machine like that if it's off this won't spin so just make sure that this the um the lever is down 
what we're going to do is we're going to apply some pressure. You don't have to, you know, you're not applying a huge amount of pressure. We're just applying enough pressure that there is a tension on this thread here. Now we're ready to switch the machine on and I'll show you that now. To switch on the machine, simply press this button here. The first two buttons have two options and this one here only has one option. The first button is the selection key of needle position and also the motor rotation direction. For the needle position, there are three options. The needle position only matters if you have a synchronizer and because this machine does not have a synchronizer, it doesn't really matter. The next is the motor rotation. Simply by holding down the button, this will change the motor rotation. D1, there's D1, and D2. D1 is when the machine will be running counterclockwise, and D2 will be when the machine is running clockwise. You want the machine to be running clockwise on this machine. This one here has two settings, P1 or P2. Now, I haven't noticed much of a difference between either of them. So I just have it on, on P1, holding the button. This is the soft start mode of the motor. And again, I haven't really noticed much of a difference between these two, but there are two options, S0 and S1. S0 means that this mode is turned off. This one here is the speed of the machine. And this is at the, this is hundreds of RPM. So 20, this so 2700 RPM. As you hold the button, it just increases quicker. When you get to the highest RPM, it will just simply go back to the lowest setting. So if I just simply click on this, it'll just go back to its lowest setting. I'm gonna leave this on 1600 RPM. When it says 1600 RPM, it's not actually 1600 RPM at the needle. The machine has to go through the speed reducer, the belt, you know, all the other mechanisms to get to the needle. So by the time 1600 gets to the needle, it's going to be much less than 1600 RPM. The machine will also recommend, depending on the uh, alternating height, so the presser foot alternating height and the stitch length, the manufacturer recommends a RPM for that. And I'll be talking about that soon. But I'm just going to leave this on 1600 RPM and that's pretty much it. So D2, P1, S0 and I'm just going to keep this on 1600 RPM. To switch off the machine simply just click that and PF will come up. The machine is will be still off even though this is still flashing and obviously to switch on the machine you just do that. If you do get PF when the machine is on, for example, this just means that there will be a problem with this power supply. So just check the different connections. But before you do check the connections, just make sure that the machine is turned off because you don't want to have the machine turned on and then um, yeah, just be safe around electricity. But just make sure the machine is turned off if you before you do start seeing the connections at the back. Now with the pedal, it's good to lay the pedal flat. Um, you don't want to be, what I had it previously, I actually had it up like this. But I noticed that you can, you can ease very easily to um, press down on the pedal, but it's a good idea to have the pedal flat. So just have it like this. 